Hello. It's good to see you. Today we're going to be making a poke cake. Now I've done these before, but right off hand I can't remember if I've done one in a video or not. Um, we're going to make an Easter poke cake. And it's called a poke a poke cake, P-O-K-E. It's called a poke cake because you literally poke holes in it. So it's really easy and it's a lot of fun. And this is going to be a very colorful cake. Um, it's, it's super simple. All you need is a box of cake mix. Now the recipe calls for white cake mix. So I just picked up this Betty Crocker with just a plain old white cake mix. The recipe said you could use you know, you can use like a lemon cake mix or yellow, whatever you want to do. But since we are going to be using a little bit of food coloring to make different sections of it a different color, it's probably best to go with something like this that's just, just plain white. So you need the cake mix and all the stuff needed to make the cake mix. You need two boxes of white chocolate jello pudding. All I could find was the sugar-free kind. I, I think there's one that's not sugar-free, but all I could find was the sugar-free, so I don't think it's gonna matter though. So you need two boxes of that, three and a half cups of milk. You also need two cups of heavy cream. I picked this up, this is just heavy whipping cream. You can find that in the dairy section, right next to the milk and the creamers and stuff. A quarter cup of, of powdered sugar or more to taste a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and food coloring. Now the recipe calls for blue, green, pink, and yellow. Um, I could not find that combination in a box, but I found these that I, th I thought were just as pretty. It's not the exact same colors, but it's still pretty. So these are pretty little gel food colors here. Orange, pink, purple, and like a, a lime green color. It's perfect. Um, so that's all you need for the actual cake. Now, after you bake the cake, you're gonna poke holes in it, and then you're gonna put the, you're gonna mix up the pudding mix, and you're just gonna pour it over the cake right before it before it firms up. It goes down in those holes. So you're gonna have crazy cats, and you're gonna have holes that have little bits of this white chocolate pudding down in them. Now we're not gonna be making an icing for this. There's you don't have to make icing or anything. You just take whip topping, like Cool Whip. I have some great value whip topping. You're just gonna cover it with that, and then you add some fun sprinkles to the top. And I found, look at this, I found these little bunny sprinkles at Walmart. Little bunny, it's little bunnies, little pink and blue and yellow bunnies, and there's even a little bunny on the top of the lid. He's so cute, look at his little face. So, but that comes, that's the last thing we're going to do is put the sprinkles on top of the, the whip topping that's going to be used like an icing for this cake. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first thing we have to do in this process is mix up our cake mix. So this is just a plain cake mix. And to make this you need one cup of water, half a cup of vegetable oil, and three egg whites or three whole eggs. We're gonna go ahead and use three whole eggs in this recipe. So, first thing you need to do is preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit for a shiny metal or glass pan, or 325 degrees Fahrenheit for a non-stick pan. Grease the bottom only of the cake pans, but we don't need to worry about that step because we're not gonna do it exactly the way we see it here. So, we have to mix together the cake mix, water, oil, and eggs in a large bowl with a mixer on medium speed or beat vigorously by hand for two minutes. So, let's do that. First, we can't go any further without taking a look at my bowls. Look at these pretty things. Now, these are made by Zach, Z-A-K Designs. And I just love them. Every time I take them out to use them, they just make me happy. All these pretty colors. And you see they just nest inside of each other. We have four here. And they all have these little speckles. Look at the little speckles on there. Aren't they pretty? It makes me think of those Robin Eggs malted milk balls you get at Easter time. They have that speckled uh, candy coating on them. For this one, I think we'll go with the large bowl, this orange one. 
But look, aren't they pretty? That one's almost got a bare spot. I think it doesn't have as many speckles up there. But look at, oh, look at all the speckles in it. It's really great. And then you have this green one. Look at that. Ooh, pretty. Very nice. For this recipe, I think, um, for this mix that we're doing, I think we're going to go ahead and use this big one. Now, when we do the different colors, we're going to need four small bowls for the different colors. Here's the mix. Look at that. It's a nice fine powder. Okay, we'll just pour this in here. Here's our oil, half a cup. That's just um, vegetable oil right there. And then we have our three eggs. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Looks like three balls. Yeah, I knew the guy that had three balls. I didn't see them, I just heard about it. But look, three eggs. I'm going to stir this up a little bit and then I'm going to I'm going to use a mixer on it. But that's very loud, so I'm going to do that separately off off camera. I'm going to mix it together a little bit first by hand. Like this. I get all the little lumps and everything. I'm gonna go ahead and just use a, a hand mixer on this, just just enough to mix it thoroughly. I have now mixed the cake mix with my hand mixer. Now the next step takes four bowls. We're gonna divide up this uh, this stuff into four bowls. Now it doesn't have to be exact, but you want to try to do the best you can. Okay, I just grab this big old, it's like a serving spoon. It doesn't matter. I'm going to do a dollop per bowl to start. Smells good already. Four. And then we're going to do another dollop per bowl. There's that one. Two. Three. doesn't have to be exact. It really, it doesn't matter. Okay, that's good enough. All right, so we're done with that big bowl. Now we have these four bowls of cake mix right here. Look at that. Very pretty. Now I tore this open like a wild animal because I, I couldn't get it open really. These are our gel food colors. And it says that these are neon gel. We have orange, neon pink, purple, and neon green. 
Now the instructions say to put two drops in each bowl, but this is a gel, so I'm just going to do two blobs. It's not supposed to affect the taste of the food at all, but we'll see what happens. Here's pink. and purple and we can add more if we need to maybe we have to mix these up I just noticed this one kind of looks like a face like it has a little smile and here it's eyes hey they all they all kind of look like little fat but they almost look like they could be faces <laughs> So I have one spoon for each bowl, and they're all the same kind. Let's see what this green does. Now I don't think I put as much green in there as I did the other colors. Just looks like cream of wheat. Here, let's add, let's add a little bit more to it. Let's see, because this isn't like the drop uh, food coloring, so I don't know, maybe a little different. Ooh, look at that swirl. Isn't that pretty? Oh, that's much better. Anyway, it did say it wouldn't affect the taste of the food you added it to. I'm wondering, I just hope it doesn't. I'm going to put a little bit more. Just like that. Partly because I'm having fun playing with it. We're going to have these fun Easter colors. All right, now that's definitely green. Look at that. This is orange. It looks kind of red, but it's orange. Oh, now it looks orange. I added more initially to this of the orange than I did the green. It looks like orange sherbet a little bit, like it's melted. I'm going to add a little bit more. Because I'm having fun with it. I guess you can make it as, you know, make the colors as vibrant as you want them to be. It's up to you. You can add as much or as little as you like. There's orange. There. Okay, and now we have, this is neon pink. Otherwise, it just looks kind of gray. I'm getting bold with this food coloring. Look at it. Oh, look at it. I got a glob of it on the spoon. I'm trying to get it off. Look how pretty that is. Now we get to add these to the pan. I have a 9 by 13 baking dish here 
and what we're going to do is we're going to put dollops of these in there like one at a time just a little bit here a little bit there and I'm just starting with this orange one okay and then we'll go with the green put a little bit here like that and I'm gonna do a dollop here right there. Purple. Do some right there. And what, oh, I didn't mean to put that there. What you're trying to do is fill up the bottom with these colors. All these pretty colors. Look. Oh, it's like bubble gum. Looks like bubble gum. So all these colors are just mushing together. Okay. Let me go back to the orange again. And you're just layering this stuff. Until you've used it all up. And it doesn't matter at this point <laughs> what it looks like. <laughs> you don't want to mix this you don't want to spread it because it'll mix the colors up you just want to take the container and just sort of tap it on the table to kind of level it out okay I've done that and then you just take a toothpick and just kind of swirl it through and I'm just gonna do that little bit there now we're gonna bake this in the oven for approximately 30 minutes until it's done and then we'll come back and take a look at it. Oh my goodness, look at this. Look at this pretty cake. I just took it out of the oven. You can see the little swirls on it. Look at it. Isn't that pretty? That is just super cool. I think it looks really pretty. Now what we have to do is let this completely cool. So I'm gonna leave it to do that. And then we're going to come back and poke holes in it. <laughs> okay, now the cake has completely cooled. And what you're supposed to do at this point 
is poke a bunch of holes in it with, it says the end of a wooden spoon, but all of my wooden spoons have these big uh, silicone ends. So I'm just going to use the end of this. You want to make it big enough for the pudding to go down into. So you don't want it to be like toothpicks. You want the holes to be a little bit bigger than that. Um, and I looked around in my kitchen drawers and I didn't really find anything better. So I'm just going to go with this. So you just want to put some holes down in your cake. That's why they call it a poke cake. And it doesn't have to be like super, you know, accurate or you don't have to use a ruler or anything. You're just poking holes in it. Just like that. Because it's a poke cake. Yeah. Well, I think that worked quite well. Look at that. Okay. Now, we've got our holes in our cake. The next thing we want to do is mix up the pudding. So we have this white chocolate jello pudding mix. You need two boxes like this. We're going to put them in here and combine that with some milk. Here we have one packet. There's one. And the second one. And now we're going to add three and a half cups of milk. I did discover I'm not going to need the heavy cream or the vanilla because that's if you want to make your own whipped topping to go on top of the cake. But since we're using Cool Whip, we don't need those items for this recipe. Seems like a lot. Okay, now we want to whisk that together. I decided, I decided to go with my fun green bowl for this. We want to let that set just a little bit and just before it sets you want to pour it into the holes in your cake. Okay that was quick. It's already starting to try to set up a little bit. So let's go ahead and pour it over the cake. Now you want to try to get it down into every one of these holes. So. I'm just doing a little zigzag pattern trying to trying to hit the holes. Hit the holes. Get the holes. All the holes. I want to get those first. And then we're just going over the cake. Boy, that stuff set up fast. There's a lot. just spread it with this here. I'm just trying to even it out a little bit. There we go. There's that. Okay, now we're going to put this in the refrigerator to let it set completely. All right, I've gotten it back out of the refrigerator. It's all nice and set. Now the next step is that we're going to take a little spatula and our whipped topping. You can make your own. The, the uh, recipe gives you the instructions of how to make your own if you want to with um, heavy cream, powdered sugar, and vanilla. But we're just going to use this pre-made great value whip topping. I love the way it looks when you first open it. <laughs> how weird. Oh, look at that. It's just, look at all those chemicals. Aren't they pretty? Look at them. Pretty chemicals. All right, there. 
So I let this soften a bit. It's been out of the freezer for a little bit. So hopefully we'll be able to smooth this over the top of that pudding without a lot of trouble. So this is going to be like your frosting. I think this would be a fun little dessert for summertime. It's a nice light dessert. You keep it refrigerated. So after you serve it, if you have leftovers, you want to put those in the refrigerator. I don't really know how thick of a layer of this to do. I don't guess it really matters a whole lot. Okay. Isn't it pretty? I broke my spaghetti uh, thing. I didn't know what to call it. I was making spaghetti last night and I was um, going to, you know, the little fork, the, the, the scoopy thing for your spaghetti. You scoop it, you know, it looks like a little fork. It's like this. I tried looking this up on the internet and it didn't help. <laughs> I, it, mine broke last night. So I was looking online for another one, but I didn't know what to call it. <laughs> It's a spaghetti claw. Like, what? <laughs> it looks like this. <laughs> I was laughing at myself because I didn't know how to search for it. I think I ended up finding it on Amazon under spaghetti spoon. That was what they called it, a spaghetti spoon. That's a funny looking spoon. I tried spaghetti claw, spaghetti scoop. <laughs> I did I've had this thing for probably 15 years and it, it just it just broke like snapped last night it was I was going to scoop and it just broke like it was plastic and it just broke so I, I'm gonna order another one I think I'll get a better one this time although that one lasted a long time I really shouldn't complain I think it came from Dollar Tree like a long long time ago okay so now we have added our whipped topping to it. Isn't that pretty? I think this would be such a fun little dessert to take on a, like to a family reunion or some sort of dinner, you know, like a potluck kind of thing. And now all that's left is to top it. And we have our fun little bunny sprinkle mix to top it with our little bunny on the top. So that's all that's left is to just decorate it. And we're just gonna sprinkle our little pretty colorful little treats on top. You can use as much or as little as you like. It's totally up to you. You can do the whole dang shaker of it if you want. Easter poke cake all ready to try and I think this is one of the prettiest things that I've ever made I think well the sprinkles I think the sprinkles make it pretty look at that it's cool and it has little candy pearls and things on top but they're tiny oh I can't wait to cut into this and see what it tastes like oh my goodness all right 
Well, the first piece is always kind of hard to get out, but I'm going to give it a shot here. I'm just going to go into the corner and try to get just a little to taste. Oh my goodness. Now this is the corner. But look at those pretty colors in there. Oh, we have all these all these pretty little marbly colors in there from that food coloring. So you have the cake on the bottom, and then you have that white chocolate pudding on top of that. And then you have the whipped topping on top of that, which of course you can make your own. The recipe tells you how to do it. It's really easy. But I decided to just go ahead and use whipped topping already made on mine. But look at the pretty colors. Oh my gosh. It's so cute and it was so easy. You just use a box of cake mix and whatever colors. I mean, you could change the colors around. You could do different ones for different occasions. You could do one like for Christmas and do like red and green or something like that. That'd be cool. But let's go ahead and try it. I want to get a bite with some of that pudding and the whip topping and the cake. A crunchy bit. Oh, that's really good. That would be perfect for like hot weather. This tastes like a hot weather dessert. It really does. It's good though. I like it. Oh, that's delicious. I really, I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about that pudding. It's, it adds a nice little layer of flavor to it. Mm. My topping slid off of my cake. It's so good though. Oh my gosh. Now the recipe does say it's better to make this ahead of time, like a day or so in advance. So it has a little time to sit in the refrigerator because it'll taste even better after a day or so in the refrigerator. So if you have an event coming up and you have some time like the day before that you can do this, you can go ahead and make it and have it ready to go the next day. Mmm. That is seriously yummy. That's very, very good. I love it. And look at, look at the pretty colors in this piece of cake right here if I can get it look at that they're all just squashed together beautifully aren't they mm. and that pudding is really good with the whipped topping on it mm. That's fabulous. That's actually super good. It's good. The top, so you have the, the icing of, it's like a, just a combination of whipped topping and the, the pudding. It's the perfect combination. It's not super, it's not super sweet, but it's just sweet enough. It goes really well with that cake. Really good. And if you don't like a super heavy icing, those two together, I think make a great I, like a, a substitute for like buttercream frosting or something like that. It's really good. I cut another little piece and just to show you the pretty colors in there, you can see the pink and the green. There's a little bit of orange and purple on the back of that slice too. So it just goes all the way through. The trash truck likes it. <laughs> trash truck. The cake is really good. It's really good. It's not a super sweet, crazy cake. Oh, it's nice. It's so nice. Mm. Fantastic. Fantastic cake. Very easy to do. Very yummy. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoy getting to see this beautiful cake today. Look at that. It's so pretty. Oh my gosh. And it's so colorful. And you don't expect it when you first look at it because you can't tell. But once you get cut a piece of it and you can see all those pretty colors in there, it's a nice little surprise. And then because we poke the holes down in it, you have some of that pudding down in there too in the little holes that we poked in it. So it's just full of surprises and it's very yummy and super easy. 
I'll put the, the uh, link in the description for the recipe so you can try it for yourself if you would like and you can modify it and do it different ways as well and I, I may do that in the future I may make this again and try I kind of thought about trying a different uh, cake mix with it but yeah I, I will definitely be making that again <laughs> so thank you so much for being here I really hope that you enjoyed getting to see this pretty cake today and I hope that you have a wonderful day. I'll see you again soon.